lost on a spaceship, you have no Star Trek DVDs, so what franchises do you watch? This is a personal recommendation and it's choices that I honestly would personally watch. So sit back, relax, and tell me what you would watch instead of Star Trek as an emergency series. So Star Trek has a lot of things I like. A lot of shows in that time of that time period have things I like in them. There are other franchises with a ton of episodes. So let's take a look at five of those franchises right now. First up is obviously Farscape. Now it's not a huge franchise. It only ran for four seasons and had some specials afterwards. But it is honestly, if you can get over the just terrible Australian accents, <coughs> Um, you will really, really enjoy this. It's original, it's funny, it has some interesting concepts like the living ship, it has some interesting prosthetics. Jim Henson's Creature Shop does the aliens, so you either have good aliens or terrible aliens. You have a really great cast with Ben Browder and Claudia Black. Uh, you really, really just get a sense of this is a normal man in a horrible situation. Um, it's an amazing mix of sort of Star Trek, but with Stargate, but with, uh, I don't know how to explain it. It's a really unique show, um, and there's nothing quite like it, but it does take a little from other things. A little bit of Star Wars as well. Um, it is a bit dated now, so the graphics do look a bit dodgy, and it also, but it has some great episodes. There's an episode where they're animated, which is hilarious. Um, there's some genuine, it's the first series I watched, which had a continuing storyline, where I just got super excited to watch the next season. So the next show I want to talk about isn't necessarily a sci-fi show, it's a superhero show, and that is Smallville, running for 10 seasons. That show just doesn't end. The first season's a bit dodgy, but Tom Welling, like, nails that role. If you don't know Superman history, kind of like myself, you'd really, really enjoy it. The only annoying thing is he doesn't wear the costume, and by the end, he's virtually just Superman. Um, it is an amazing show, as I said, 10 seasons. They pretty much pick and choose what they want from Superman's history to put it in. We have performances from Christopher Reeve, and I believe that they were just before he passed away. Um, it has an amazing uh, sort of... I don't know how to describe it. It has an amazing sense of emotion. It was the first of those big shows, like... Um, we didn't get any spin-offs from Smallville, but there's certainly, you could see that it could have been a CW Arrowverse sort of situation. And 10 seasons with 24 episodes a season, like it's a big show and it'll take a lot of time away. The next franchise that I would say, not even a franchise, it's not, it, there's a new series coming out soon, but it's not a franchise, um, is Quantum Leap with Scott Bakula. Now the reason I got excited about Enterprise in the beginning was because Scott Bakula was in it. Quantum Leap is essentially probably the most unique show, it's probably closest relative would be Sliders, and I don't really know why, but Quantum Leap... Quantum Leap basically sees Dr. Samuel Beckett going back in time to, within his lifetime, into other people's bodies and putting right what, what once went wrong. And it's a really, really interesting concept when he goes into, and it's amazing because they talk about race, they talk about um, trans, like there's a few episodes where he becomes a woman, there's uh, episodes where he's a gay man, they're dealing with gay issues in the early 90s when it was still a little bit taboo. Um, it's a really, really great show, um, and uh, Scott Bakula plays it really, really well, and Dean Stockwell is just a gem of that show. Um, certainly a watch. It went for five seasons, and there's a reboot coming soon, so we'll see how that goes. Second on my list it is obviously one of the biggest franchises with one of the... I don't know, I want to say biggest franchise. It's a huge uh, TV show and couple of TV shows with an amazing amount of uh, characters and storylines. If you're interested in history, it kind of tickles your fancy. Um, I watched the original film and I got right into it, which is Stargate. So Stargate the movie, I don't mind it, but Stargate SG-1, Atlantis and Universe were just great. They went on, you had... 10 seasons of Stargate SG-1, and it only really, like, it got a bit slow in the middle, but that show was an all, 
all firing by the end of its 10th season. You had Ben Browder and Claudia Black coming from Farscape, and it was, it was just like, oh my god, I like both these shows. Uh, and then you had, obviously, Atlantis, which is kind of like Star Trek Voyager. Um, it does get a little bit annoying because there's a lot of principal cast that change in the later seasons, especially of Atlantis. Um, but it didn't really take away from the show, and I really quite enjoyed it. Uh, Universe was a darker tone. I feel like this is a bit where they jump the shark. But overall, the concept of travelling through an ancient gate from uh, Earth to another planet using symbols is a really interesting concept. Uh, they go into Egyptology, they go into ancient Norse mythology and Celtic mythology. It's a really amazing show, and it's certainly one I would recommend to give a watch. The only comparable franchise to Star Trek, and no, I'm not talking about Star Wars. You think I am, but I'm not. I'm talking about Doctor Who. We have 60 years worth of history next year, and we have 14 Doctors plus random other Doctors they seem to shove in from everywhere. Uh, the classic series is obviously classic and very old, and to be honest, the oldness in classic Doctor Who lasted till 1989. Uh, and you want to start off with the new series, there's been 13 series of that, there was a ton of series, a classic series, there's a ton of tie-in novels, comics, books, the Doctor is a time traveller from a planet called Gallifrey, although I don't want to spoil it for you, uh, from a planet called Gallifrey, he travels in a TARDIS, which is bigger on the inside than the outside, that looks like a blue British police box, he usually has a beautiful companion with him, and he basically uh, puts right what goes wrong, but generally involving aliens. Um, and very, I think the only ones in the original series, the very beginning, they had no aliens. But Doctor Who's very much about the aliens now, very much about the Daleks. Uh, there's also two movies which, which aren't in continuity. There's specials like Day of the Doctor and The Five Doctors. Uh, it's a really, if you don't give a shit about continuity in a show, like, for example, the new series of Doctor Who, which started in 2005, has a lot of continuity. So you can sort of follow along with that. Uh, in regards to the old series, there's nothing. Nothing makes sense. You might as well just throw it out the window. Lots of contradictions. It's a really great show, but you just got to understand that with every production team, things change, things look different. With every couple of years, there's a new, new actor playing the character of the Doctor. Sometimes a man, one time a woman. Uh, it's a really interesting show. Different showrunners bring different things, it has a unique look, and it's probably one of the main reasons I accept New Trek, because New Trek is kind of like what Doctor Who does all the time. Uh, and that is my list of five shows you should watch other than Star Trek. Um, and make sure to come back, or make sure to write down in below if you think I've missed anything. Star Wars is not going to be here, because Star Wars, although it's a franchise, hasn't really grabbed me in the way that these other shows have. So make sure to share, come back, this is Trek Travels.